Worth the Trip features a wide variety of out-of-school activities and offers practical advice on how to organise and get the best out-of-school trips. Coming up, the staff and pupils of Greenfold Special School venture out of the classroom to Salford Museum and Art Gallery to explore a history exhibition fit for a pharaoh. And there's a chance to see Lucy Marks pupils from Pace's Special School take off their brakes and glide on ice on a recreational visit to their local rink in Sheffield. Jobshare teachers Joanne Hurst and Jan Eggleton from Greenfold Special School in Farmworth are preparing their lower Key Stage 2 class for an educational visit to Salford Museum and Art Gallery. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> That's a lovely smile. Normally we go out for half a day, once a fortnight, and twice a term we do go out on full day visits according to the topics that we're doing. The trip is only feasible if the teachers can secure at least one person per wheelchair. Having six pupils in the class will mean the same number of staff members are needed for the educational visit. It's quite difficult getting um, a group of children who are in wheelchairs on an educational visit because they need so much space on the bus to make it safe for them. So one teacher will drive one bus, the other teacher will drive the other. Um, we've got mobile phones on board so we can be in contact with each other. Safety is, is really is the priority, so two buses, we feel, is, is the best way to get the children there. The venue is approximately 30 minutes' drive from the school. The party has been stuck in traffic for nearly an hour. This will have a knock-on effect on the rest of the trip. Over an hour late, the group finally arrives at Salford Museum and Art Gallery, which currently has an exhibition on ancient Egypt. The pupils are learning about the history of Egypt and the trip will give them a greater understanding of the topic. Basically, it's called Beasts of the Nile. We're going to be looking at the different kinds of animals, what the Egyptians thought were gods and why they worshipped them. We're going to look at Egyptian toys that the children might have played with. Are you ready? Hieroglyphics, how the Egyptians wrote their names. It's going to be a very multi-sensory experience for the children because um, the group who are going have got very varied needs. So we need a wide range of activities for the children to be able to experience and participate in to make it a worthwhile visit. Coal fire. Uh, that, no. that, I don't like that one either. The hippopotamus. Oh, you're tapping this one. Oh, good girl. You're feeling his head. And she's got a visual impairment and coordination difficulties. So for her to locate it in my hand and to, to, to grasp it and take it up to look at, it's a really good hand-eye coordination skill. She's very actively exploring, which is great. If all the children have had a look around the activities here, so they're all going for a drink now in the canteen, and then we're coming back and we're looking at more sensory things in a different room. Uh, we've decided, because we've been delayed with the traffic, that we will ring school in a bit and just to warn them that we are going to be late back so they're not panicking. We take a lot of photographs of the children for their records of achievement that we keep over the year. They can't go home and tell the parents what they do. So over the year we uh, put together a record of achievement for every individual child over all the curriculum areas that's presented to each child at a special assembly at the end of the year. Back in the classroom, the pupils spend the afternoon carrying on their researches into Egypt. All the things we saw all come from a place called Egypt. We've got a big triangle and a 
little triangle. Very good. If I hold them, can you show me which is the big triangle? Very good boy. The emphasis of what I've just done is uh, prior to half term we were doing shape recognition and um, building on that skill with the introduction of a new shape of a pyramid. A giant pyramid. A giant pyramid, yes, that's right. So base that's right, that's where is the giant pyramid is there? Well done. So basically it was a bit of reinforcing skills that he's already got. Building on that, pyramids. yes, giant pyramids, that's right. And uh, relating it in a way to, to the history topic that we're doing now. There are numerous benefits in taking Greenfold's pupils out of the classroom. I think uh, you, you widen the experience so much more. They're uh, coming into contact with oh, a whole range of sensory activities that, that they wouldn't get within a classroom. No matter how difficult the educational visit is in terms of planning, um, it's very, very worthwhile and it's something that I hope I'm able to do for a foreseeable future. Goodbye, everyone, it's time to go home. Goodbye, everyone, it's time to go home. Goodbye, everyone, it's time to go home. I'll see you again on Wednesday. There are many other educational trips available at venues particularly appropriate for special schools. At the Eden Project in St Austell, Cornwall, pupils are inspired to look at the world around them and understand their environment. Plants are used to stimulate the senses. The Butterfly Zoo in ross on wye breeds exotic butterflies. The zoo is a quiet, peaceful sanctuary, offering pupils a maths experience and an insight into the conservation of exotic creatures. The London Aquarium provides a therapeutic and soothing environment for learners with special needs, with its 40 living displays and a host of underwater life. Eureka in Halifax is a science museum which offers pupils with special needs ways of encountering science through drama, sound and rhythm. The Life Science Centre in Newcastle-upon-Tyne offers a life lab run by science professionals. Subjects include fantastic fossils, jumping bugs and DNA fingerprinting. Lucy Marks from Paces High Green Special School in Sheffield is treating her class to a recreational outing to an ice rink. And sit and stand. Head in the middle. Good girl and... Puh! Ice Sheffield is the nearest skating venue, which holds a weekly ice mobility session where wheelchair users can take to the ice. In my class there's six students. The age range is 11 to 18. They're all in wheelchairs, although a couple of them are able to do walking, but um, for health and safety reasons on the ice, they'll be in their wheelchairs. I've never done it before, so I was quite nervous. But some staff who I work with have done it before and said it was a really great experience. The trip we're going on today um, came about because um, we visited Ice Sheffield and um, they invited us to come along to have a go at skating on the ice ourselves. So it's not strictly a curriculum trip, it's, you know, like a Christmas treat as well. We have to have a specially adapted bus. Because of my students' needs, I have to take a high staff to student ratio. The journey itself should be 20 to 30 minutes, depending on traffic. You're going to help me with my boot, Daniel. You're going to help me lace it up. I've got to swim this morning. That's it. Let's turn it this way. Let's turn it this way. It's a bit like lacing your shoes on your boots, isn't it? That's it. Make it nice and tight, all right? Put it back to the middle now. Back to the middle. Back to the middle, that's it. But you're going to go on the ice in your wheelchair, aren't you? I can go faster. Yeah, we need faster. to be careful. Like this trip is also really good for like inclusion because it um, 
it enables us to take part in like wider activities um, that aren't necessarily totally curriculum based. We spend a lot of time in school um, teaching and learning new skills, um, but it's real life situations like this that we get to try them out. It's the ice. Is it hot or cold? Cold. Cold. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Ooh. That's why we've got our coat on, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you like the ice rink? Yeah. Yeah. Can you see all the people? Yeah. Yeah. Do you like moving around with them? Yeah. Yeah. Jody. With Jody. You like going around uh, with Jody? Um, Joanna. And Joanna. Too. Well, somebody um, came to see us during lunchtime and invited us um, to come and look at the ice hockey. So um, we've come along and it's been a lovely experience for me, new experience for me, and also a new experience for my students. Um, so we've not been to an ice match before. We work very hard to develop social skills and um, life skills and um, a trip like this really helps us to extend and develop them and practice them in the real world and my students actually got talking to some people as well so it's really nice I mean um, a lovely chance for my students to, to meet some new people while they're doing something that they really enjoy doing. I find something like the ice thing that we've just done can seem quite daunting, but generally, if you talk to the venue and they've done it before, they will sort of give you support with that and um, ensure that all your health and safety needs are being met. It normally takes us about 10 to 15 minutes um, to load onto the bus, and then it probably takes Andy a little bit longer to sort of make sure that everything's in place. Some of our students have sort of um, harnesses that go across their chests. So um, we have to add that time on, well, put it into consideration when we're doing a trip. And they've really enjoyed it. There are many other suitable recreational trips available around the country. The Anglesey Sea Zoo is a large marine aquarium offering tours through a shipwreck and over a shark pool. Outside facilities include radio controlled boats, aqua blaster and fun photo boards. The Calvert Trust in Keswick, Kielder and on Exmoor specialises in outdoor activities for people with disabilities. The Trust aims to encourage the pursuit of personal growth and fulfilment through adventure. Duke's Barn in Beeley, Derbyshire provides an adventurous environment in which pupils of all ages and abilities can participate in outdoor activities. Celebrity Pig in Manchester is a group of actors with learning difficulties. The group devises, produces and performs public shows both on stage and on screen. Kids Out, based in Bedfordshire, is a national charity providing holidays for children with special needs across the UK. Kids Out operates a grant aid system offering schools financial assistance towards holidays and days out. 